things are gonna get worse. If you think things are bad, you ain't seen nothing yet. Cards, capitalism, capitalism. China cards. Let me tell you something. To be radical is to attempt to get to the roots of things. radical is to attempt to get to the roots of things to get to the roots of things what does this mean how does one do such a thing let's take someone who's completely not radical they would never be at the root of anything um, for example let's take someone who would blame their personal problems on uh, completely arbitrary things or completely apparent things without any attempt to question why those things are. So for example, this is normally people who say things are just because someone is bad. So one example could be, why did my boss not give me the pay I wanted because he or she is a bad person or because uh, just, just because they didn't want to or whatever or why or, or rain sucks rain, I don't like it when it rains something like that then the next step would be to look at some sort of root cause for that. So to look for some cause. So rain sucks. Why is it raining so much? Because of climate change. Fucking pollution in the atmosphere. We need to be greener. And then you could go even more to see. So, so right now we're still not a particularly radical beliefs. The first example is almost comedically it's sort of child the sort of thing a child would think but this is this level is sort of the standard but climate change is bad we need to be greener but then you may go beyond that to a sort of level of why is climate change happening and you could say something like climate change is happening because of industrial capitalism and therefore we need an end to industrial capitalism and at that point you're radical at that point, you've gone beyond the standard towards a more radical perception of things. But the problem is that the more radical you are, the, the harder it is to actually get that change. So, because it's radical, it needs it's a bigger shift. So, eliminating industrial capitalism is much harder than just recycle bro even though in truth just recycle bro is not gonna do what you want it to do but then again you, the next step of the the radical the next the next step in being radical is to examine not just the root cause of the problem but the root cause of the solution so it wouldn't just be It 
it wouldn't just be eliminate industrial capital capitalism it would be to eliminate it would be to take a look at why such thing would even happen what are its far-reaching consequences what I'm saying is Capitalism is bad, right? I, even people who are pro-capitalism are anti-capitalism. Their argument is essentially it's the, it's better than the alternative, which is you know I'm not going into that right now. It's but it's a surprisingly solid argument. Is what I mean, uh, and the reason for that is because of a lot of Marxists not understanding Marx or not understanding the historical historical progress um, feudalism didn't turn into capitalism because someone didn't like it or a lot of people didn't like it there were many 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 revolts through the entire long and storied history of feudalism feudalism only collapsed into capitalism once feudalism had reached its final stage and stopped mutating, once it had actually progressed to the point where it was not going to progress any further without the, the internal collapse and shift into capitalism. And yet, leftists seem, and other radical political groups seem, to handily ignore this prerequisite when talking about a shift from capitalism into communism or whatever other ideology uh, and we can essentially simplify this problem just like you would simplify an algebra equation instead of the specifics about capitalism and socialism and that we could just assume that the end goal is utopia and that human history is dystopia that would mean following the logic that would mean that in order for utopia to be reached dystopia would have to reach its final conclusion it would have to be in the most internally inconsistent form of dystopia possible before it could actually collapse and people don't like this including me no one really likes this conclusion because no one it's not really something you can predict like a lot of people like to say things like late capitalism to describe our current situation whereas I don't think we're anywhere close to late capitalism um, I used to think we were, but now that I know more, capitalism is clearly still mutating, and it probably has another, like, a long time ahead of it, probably more than my lifetime, and so just saying, bro, just wait, <laughs> is not a satisfactory answer for a lot of people. And therefore, you get this idea of that somehow a spontaneous revolution could happen. Um, well, it can't. And so the solution, which seems to have been jumped up, is accelerationism, right? This, or left accelerationism, I guess this concept of accelerating capital's internal inconsistencies so that the collapse happens faster at least that's one branch of one type of accelerationism it's a broad term and uh, if leftists really subscribed 
if Marxists specifically, if Marxists really subscribe to their belief system, then they would be the most ruthless oil barons in the world. They would be the most aggressive Wall Street tycoons. Because they know that the more you do capitalism, the faster it will fall apart. That just waiting is pointless. And sabotage is good. And so this is their logic, is something along the lines of you have to have to have internal inconsistencies, this di diatribe it's not the word I'm looking for. Dialectic, that's the word. Uh, you have to have the push and pull of the bourgeoisie and the proletariat. So they're like, let's side with the proletariat, of course, and just keep pummeling away. When really, it's the bourgeoisie who are in control of the speed of things. And so, if you were looking, if you were to completely ignore any sort of moralism or ethical dilemmas or whatever, then you would see that the best way to do it would be to, to switch sides. And now, you know, how possible is it to just suddenly become a bourgeoisie? It's not really possible. But that would, that would be their aim if they were logically consistent. And um, there's another thing, which is we're, we're going to talk a little more about this, this sort of accelerating kind of thing. So a lot of the part of acceleration is cybernetics, that you can sort of accidentally solve these problems through various technological means, cybernetic means, as in on the wired it said okay everyone up uploads themselves suddenly scarcity doesn't exist because copying is simple you can just copy something you've accidentally solved scarcity and therefore capitalism becomes irrelevant and you sort of automatically just transcend into Star Trek land. The question is what the fuck are you talking about? The question is what do you mean by just upload yourself to the wired? What does that entail? No one actually knows yet. A lot of people will like to think they know, but the the science isn't there yet to know what it would actually be like and so there's two groups of thought which is either to just sort of assume such a thing is possible this is the Elon Musk situation to just make the assumption that it's possible and therefore work towards it because assuming it's not possible is not going to get anyone anywhere so you got to assume it's possible because if you, if you don't even try, you'll never know. That's the Elon Musk theory. Versus the... The... The, the Lanus theory, which is... Um, do what you can while you can do it. Regardless of... Even though it's... You could call it early adopters. Regardless of how incomplete the transition is to... do what you can to transcend physicality in the meantime because well arguably for self-interest but also arguably for other reasons um, now both of these sides obviously have their big problems but I'll, I'm sure that Elon Musk's side is pretty self-evident, so I'm going to talk more about the Lanus side's problems here. Um, namely, a, a dissatisfaction because you haven't solved any of the ultimate problems of being human. Um, the ultimate problems of um, 
non-consensual birth of um, finite conscious life of um, inability to picture the void of fear of death etc etc there's many more problems those are just some obvious ones everyone knows there's problems with being a human being if you don't read Ligotti or just watch the OED loves me not so it's it's essentially a race to to destroy humanity and why why should we destroy humanity because there's this common belief among transhumanists who I need to clarify I align myself in opposition of but there's this, there is this strong belief among transhumanists that and adjacent folks humanity's ultimate goal should be to tr to transcend entropy to defeat entropy and my rebuttal response is what the fuck are you on about mate don't do that entropy is fucking sick why would you want to defeat entropy and I feel like a lot of people don't understand what what I mean by entropy what I mean by when I say I'm an Eresian or a Discordian or whatever and so this is not no Illuminati shit this is just a fucking scholar's cradle mate don't fucking come at me bitch uh, so entropy is essentially chaos right thermodynamics entropy always goes up and so that means the universe will eventually end because it will spread out too thin and the entropy yeah so that's bad because humans have a fear of death not for any other reason it's only bad because humans can't imagine the infinite uh, but also entropy is very important not just for I mean you could you it's everything is entropy everything's chaos and when I say chaos I don't mean chaos things that may seem chaotic to humans like for example um, a crowd a, a big crowd of people it might seem like chaos while you're in it but if you were to look from above it's very easy to make predictions about where a crowd will go and what a crowd will do what I mean is the opposite of that where you have a simple set of inputs and a very complicated hard to predict set of outputs mathematical chaos which is you know true randomness comes from the locations of particles right so the universe is not what it seems on our layer of abstraction not through consciousness necessarily through physicality, dimensionality the universe is actually as you will know if you've studied quantum physics or quantum gravity the universe is more like one massive interlaced and tangled probability field probability cloud and everything or maybe not yet I have a feeling this is where it's going though where the physics is heading that everything can essentially be described rather than as a function of partic particles as a function of probability probabilities collapses if you want to call them that even though I don't I don't specifically subscribe to that to the, the collapse model the Copenhagen interpretation um, and so what does this probability cloud mean it means the universe is at its core built on randomness it's essentially a weighted die uh, a probability is just weighted randomness it's just weighted randomness
it means it's random, but more likely than not that it's going to be over here, but it still has a chance of being over here, and we can't predict which one it is. So if you were to, to defeat entropy as these transhumanists pretend it is possible, you would be... I don't even... Like, how? <laughs> what are you talking about? You would have to... Well, I guess it may be possible in some very, very difficult to comprehend for me situation where humanity would end up creating its own universe or something that may function similarly to a universe but couldn't necessarily be called a universe. That might be possible, but th that wouldn't really be defeating entropy, that would sort of be escaping it which I guess might be okay for them but I don't necessarily see the point to that because God would be sad what would it mean to know everything that seems like a dog chasing a car hey joker quotes we're talking about chaos joker quotes wouldn't necessarily know what to do when I caught one. That's what defeating entropy is. Okay, but why? Because it's a really big lofty goal that sounds important. No. The goal of humanity, in my view, should be the destruction of itself. The total destruction and annihilation of humanity, because it's a terrible thing for all involved. <laughs> and I don't mean necessarily just through antinatalism, although antinatalism is valid praxis, of course, very much so, but that's not the only valid praxis. Any form of post-humanism is supported here, whether you're talking extinctionist, eco, well, I, I hate this word, but eco-fascist, I don't think that's uh, a appropriate to use in this context, but I can't think of a better descriptor. Prim Hyper-primitivist, I guess, or uber-primitivist, I don't know, um, versus the, the model we were talking about before, the, the wired interconnectedness model, where you trans, you would because this this is the problem with transhumanism versus posthumanism is transhumanists assume that uploading your consciousness would, to a computer, assuming such a thing is possible, would be well. They make many incorrect assumptions. I'll start with they assume that that consciousness would be recognizable as consciousness to the rest of humanity. Most likely, if someone did upload them, themselves to a computer and they did the thing that. that that Soma talks about, where they they upload their consciousness and then in, in the same instant kill their physical self, so that it seem, feels like a seamless transition. I feel like in that situation, whoever was watching it would think it had failed because they the consciousness that had been created would be so radically different, and um, and so a lot of their solution involves. Uh, this, their solution to the problem that the brain is not necessarily software running on hardware would be to essentially model the hardware, you know, since, since what are they fucking called, connectomes? Connectomes, I believe is the word. Uh, essentially modeling the brain, simulating the entire brain, uh, like in an accurate physical model, not just like a... So, yeah, essentially simulating a physical model of the brain within a computer, in which case you've really solved very few problems. You've solved very few problems. The only problems you've solved is to make brain computer interfacing much easier, but in the end, that's not a final step. That's a that's a first step towards post-humanism, because then you're going to inevitably, once you've got your brain in that situation, you're going to want to modify it, and the more you modify it, the further away from humanity you're going to become until it's something completely unrecognizable. And this is where transhumanism fails in its ridiculous and misguided notion of maintaining humanity through this stuff when in fact the goal should be to completely leave it behind 
So the best practice you can do as a whatever you want to call this, I don't know, post-humanist would be both antinatalism, yeah, preferably militant, radical antinatalism. Although any is better, any is infinitely better than none, and the lamest approach or the Elon Musk approach to brain-computer interfacing and or accelerating capital because techno capital the faster capital is able to produce advanced technologies advanced cybernetics would, would Feed, feed off of itself, plus things like genetic enhancements, the the net terminal gene type of situation. If I, the first thing I'd get rid of is the need to urinate. I uh, but the first time I realized the human body was inefficient this, this is a non sequitur, it's not urination it's a when I was in science class in school as a young young child uh, you breathe in oxygen, you breathe out carbon dioxide and water and I said you, you breathe out water you breathe out water vapor and then the teacher was like yeah that's what why you you can see your breath in a cold day, and I was thinking, well, that's a fucking waste, isn't it? Human beings need water. What what if you could? Why can't we figure out a way to recapture all the water we're breathing out? If it's happening so much, you could probably drink it again and save a bunch. Why is the body evolved in such a inefficient way because evolution is not survival of the best possible model it's survival of the yeah that'll do it doesn't have to be amazing it just has to be better than what came before I think that's what people don't understand about every type of every type of word what's the word step by step is not the word I'm looking for but that's that will do as a, as a, a good stand-in for the word I'm looking for what is the word I'm looking for step by step like not structured not segmented staggered I guess will do evolution every sort of change like that it always preferences it never preferences the best possible outcome it always preferences whatever works first and easiest not best because once you've got something that works it there's no pressure on the system to push further than that it just needs to be slightly better it just needs to be better than what came before that's what people don't understand about AI as well like I wouldn't trust a AI driver, for example, that type of thing, self-driving vehicles. Self-driving vehicles don't need to be perfect, they just need to be better than humans, even if it's only marginally, and then it will be over for human drivers, because there, there will be no, well, I just feel safer when I'm in control. That may be true, you may feel that way, but that won't be accurate, even if it's only marginally better. But humans can't process that, we don't like it. And so that leads us to some weird stuff. Where we expect perfection, where perfection is actually just ridiculous. Like there's a lot of examples. The idea that something should be perfectly not dangerous is insane. Everything's dangerous. I uh, I think um I think that's good enough for now. 5, 
two. 